What's going on everybody? Mortem here, and today we are talking about something a little different, video game marketing. So if this happens to be the first video of mine you're watching, typically what I do is review video games. I play a lot of CRPGs and just RPGs in general, really. But my actual job is sales. What I do in real life is sell things to people. So I kind of wanted to just discuss and give a broad general overview of how video games market themselves to their audience. So with that in mind, a couple of things right off the bat. One, I'm not going over like specific tactics. For instance, things like how mobile games will give this ultra value bundle for a low price to kind of break the ice and get a person comfortable with the idea of spending money on their game. That is a real tactic mobile games use, by the way. Things like that I'm not covering. I'm talking more about the stages of a marketing campaign for an actual full-blown title because I think pretty much everybody watching this video will agree mobile games are garbage. But with that stuff out of the way, let's actually jump into this. Basically, video game marketing comes down to three stages. Now, there is going to be some overlap here and there between these stages, but generally speaking, it's three distinct stages. Now, these are going to be tied to the dev cycle because some of these stages can't really be promoted until the game is at a place where it can actually show and promote those things. But to start it off, Stage one. Stage one is basically an awareness campaign. This is kicked off typically when a game is announced. This is going to be announcement trailers, uh, just kind of like general information trailers. We see this a lot at E3, for instance, Starfield. These trailers are typically characterized by simply not giving you any information besides the absolute bare bones basics. Now that can be for a variety of reasons. Perhaps that the game is at a point in its development where specifics might change, so they're just not ready to talk about them beyond the broad sweeping view of what they want their game to be. For instance, again, most notably, uh, Starfield actually did this at E3. Their trailer showed basically nothing, but it got across the point that you're going to be exploring space with this company or faction called Constellation. Now, as a game moves a bit closer to its release and is farther along in production, this is when we start seeing the information stage happen. Sometimes this will overlap with announcements, sometimes not. Again, just kind of depends on the actual dev cycle. But stage two is information. This is when the dev will start highlighting features, gameplay, actually giving information and you know footage of the game actually being played. Now, this is typically where a game will go all in on whatever its hook is. So, video games especially tend to focus on a hook, basically. Like, the thing they think is going to sell their game the most. Now, this is actually something that annoys me personally. Honestly, Stage 1 tends to annoy me a little bit as well. Basically, Stage 2 in their hook is where they'll focus on the thing that they want to show the most that oftentimes it can misrepresent the game they are trying to sell which can lead to a lot of marketing problems and a lot of blowback when the game releases, and it's not this at all. This is sort of a problem with Stage 1 as well, simply because those announcement trailers and things can often be more about a concept of a game than what that game actually winds up being. Stage 3 is usually what happens when a game has a set release date, and is usually within a couple months of that actual release. This is basically your buy stage or your decision making about buying stage, whatever you want to call it. This is typically a trailer or something that shows off all of the stuff from the information trailers and things like that, but also comes with an actual release date. The difference here is that typically this is where you're going to start seeing things like pre-order bonuses, incentives to make you buy the game, preferably before the release. Now, after a game releases, this is typically the same type of ad you'll see for the game, though it might wind down, you know, after like the initial hype is gone. But typically the post-release strategy is also basically the buy stage as well. Now, this is where I want to talk about the marketing a bit candidly. The entire point of marketing is to sell you something. All three of the stages I just mentioned apply to basically any game. It does not matter what it is, it doesn't matter how good that game is, nothing about this marketing is going to make that game any better than it is. The entire goal of marketing is just to sell you the game, which is why I said preferably you'll pre-order it. That's why they offer you incentives to do so, because at the end of the day, once you've purchased it, it is unlikely that you're going to go through the hassle of returning it. We see an example of this with Cyberpunk 2077. As horribly as that game launched, 
it still made a profit day one because the refunds didn't even scratch the surface of the sales that game put out, which is why you're constantly being pushed to pre-order and buy things ahead of time. Now, honestly, I don't necessarily have anything against pre-orders. I know some people are like die hard. Don't ever do it. I'm not that kind of person. Like I pre-order collector's editions and shit all the time. So I'm definitely not going to be like the don't ever do it guy. But my point is you need to be consciously aware of what it is doing. Because in my opinion, the single most important thing to take away from marketing is to understand that all they want to do is sell you something. They're not your friends. They're not going to help you. They just want to get their money from selling you this game. That is it. That is their only goal. If they can do that in a PR friendly way that makes them look good, they'll be more than happy to do that as well. But at the end of the day, their one goal is to sell you this thing. Now this is where I want to make an important distinction as well before we wrap this video up. The people marketing a game and the people making the game are not the same people. Your artists, your, like, you know, your software engineers, all that, the people who are actually coding these games, they don't have anything to do with the marketing typically. Now, a developer might act as like a front man for marketing, but that typically tends to be high level developer positions. And the vast majority of developers typically aren't involved in this process at all, which I think is important because developers themselves get way too much hate when at the end of the day, a lot of these decisions about how a game is packaged and sold comes down to marketing. With that out of the way, Truly, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you found the video informational at the very least. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.